So, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I want to say a massive thank you to absolutely everyone who watched my State of iRacing 2020 video. The support, the viewership numbers, everything was incredible. And it's all thanks down to you guys who watched the videos, who commented, were sharing it around as well. Thank you so much. That was my first video of this style that went over a thousand views in a week, which for me is a massive achievement, something I don't get to do all so often. So thank you for that. But enough about me. Let's get into today's topic. And it's one of those things that both rookies and pro world championship drivers can do better. There's no driver out there who can say they've actually maximized to 100% of their capability their consistency the ability to do a lap and then another lap and another lap and then another 30 laps all within the same lap time range it's extremely tricky to do through a number of factors from fuel loads tire wear all of the little things going on in a race that you don't quite see including track ev evolution it is a very difficult skill but there is one technique in particular i'll be talking about towards the end of this video that i think is really really important and that really helps when I was putting that practice into action. It helped me deliver some of my best racing results ever. It requires a lot of work though. So if you're not willing to put in the hours, not willing to put in the laps as well, this video may not be for you. But otherwise, stick around and I'll see how I can help you guys out. What exactly is consistency? Consistency is basically the ability to get all of your laps within a very certain range of time. Whether that's within two to three tenths per lap, which is an ideal range. Or even a bit closer if you're perhaps doing, you know, dirt racing, for example, where you should actually be within half a tenth at least every single lap. Consistency is an extremely difficult thing to develop, and it can only be done through maximizing muscle memory and making sure you know the layout and car you are driving to the absolute best of your ability. If one of these things isn't quite up to scratch, you are going to struggle quite a bit, but it is one of those things that requires a lot of practice. But what is the best way to go about improving your consistency? It's one of those things where a lot of sim drivers are very much divided. Some will go for 10 lap runs and just do so many that they really learn the maximum of their car at the start of a stint. But then you've got the other ones who choose to do a full stint. And then you've got my Italian teammate, Simone Maria Marchino, who will literally bang on every single day about hell training. The one thing I felt really helped me when I started driving a new car or a new track is to make sure when you're doing practice, you don't do less than 10 laps in a stint. Make sure you always do at least 10 laps in a single run. So if you're, you know, testing out a new setup, if you're testing out, you know, a different driving style through a corner, a different gear, different which, what, whatever it may be, do 10 laps every single time you will eventually build up that consistency because 10 laps on most circuits, a Laguna Seca or a Sebring or whatever it might be, it's going to be 15 to 20 minutes of driving, which is really the minimum you need to be doing to achieve that consistency. And by the end of the run, you will definitely get closer and closer in your lap time as you build yourself into a rhythm. Rhythm is so much of consistency and eventually getting yourself into what some drivers will call the flow. That is where you'll do your most dangerous lap times, your quickest, most outrageous race times you could ever dream of will come when you are truly in the flow. But that all comes down to a lot of different details and how you practice is a big one. So make sure you're not, you know, trying your new setup, do one lap, back to the pits. Don't do that because you're just going to get yourself into a really bad habit, bad rhythm, and you're going to be driving the car in a very unique way because you're only going to get used to the car on new tires, on a high fuel load, cold pressures, all of that. You're not going to be able to learn how the car reacts when the tires come up to pressure, when the fuel load starts to burn off, when the track temperature rises. All of those little details is not going to be found out and discovered in practice if you're only doing short runs. And you can even make sure you're having a little bit of fun with it as well and set yourself little challenges when you're doing these 10 lap runs. Make sure that you are monitoring your lap times during these 10 lap runs. If you do one stint or one 10 lap run and you are within six tenths every single lap from start to finish, lap one to lap 10, on your next run, try and keep it within five tenths. Always try and get that average lap time that you're doing down as low as you can. Try and maximize your result that way. Don't just go for 10 lap runs and be happy that you're doing 10 lap runs. Always try and challenge yourself, push yourself to that next little level to be more consistent because the more you can actually focus on getting into your flow, getting into your rhythm, you will be able to get quicker and quicker during your 
uh, stints as well. So not only will you see that your actual lap times are improving and your consistency at the same time, you'll also notice you're slowly going to start making less mistakes. Your body can almost do it on autopilot. This is what is called muscle memory and it's something basketballers use quite a lot when they're doing like a three point shot or practice in that kind of way, layups, you know, whatever it might be. It's a really, really, really powerful technique and sim racing is so much of muscle memory. So if you're not practicing your muscle memory, you're only doing 50% of the job because so much of racing is instinct. So much of it though is muscle memory, making sure that when you hit the brakes, you know the exact amount of brake pressure to apply. From car to car, it's going to be different. In a Viet supercar, bang, straight down to 95% brake pressure immediately. You try and do 95% brake pressure in a Porsche Cup car, not spinning around. Being able to truly understand everything that is going on with the car, where the tyres are going to be at at this lap, where the fuel load is going to make the car slider or move around a bit in this part of the track, it all helps you develop such a high knowledge of the car and track combination and it allows you to get into a very special place as a racing driver known as the flow. When you reach the point where you can do laps consistently and are no longer thinking about what gear you need to be in, what speed you should be aiming at, you've already reached the very basic understanding of being in a rhythm and are halfway there to getting yourself into a flow and becoming deadly consistent. The flow is the point where a driver just feels totally in tune with what they're doing on track. They're prepared for everything the car will throw at them, and when a driver is in this rhythm, especially in a race, they are dangerous to be around in the best kind of way. You'll drive your best ever races when in this mindset, and after the race, you'll scare yourself sometimes with what you've just done. I remember preparing for this year's Nürburgring 24 hours and doing all of the VRS GT Sprint Series races. For the most part, I was running 804s and 805s very consistently. But in this one race, for whatever reason, identical weather to all the previous races, I got into a very intense flow with the car. I completed every single lap of that race below an 803 and won by close to 80 seconds. I was so far ahead of the competition that there was absolutely zero incentive to keep driving at the same level, at the same speed, at the same pace. But the particular flow and level of consistency I had achieved through practice meant that in that flow, I was incredibly comfortable driving at a frankly absurd high pace over an entire 40 minute race. These are the races that a lot of us sim racers dream about, but they only come through intense practice and making sure not only are you doing the practice, but perfect practice too. As I mentioned earlier in the video, three to four lap runs are not going to net this kind of result. The kind of practice that is going to net a flow and a really high level of pace is going to be what my Italian teammate Simone Maria Marciano calls hell training and this is what so many sim racers should be doing if they're going to be competing in an ultra high level. Simply fill the car up with as much fuel as possible and run the tank out. If it's an endurance race and you know you're going to be double stinting the tyres at some point, then practice the double stints. So instead of maybe doing a 10 lap run like I was saying earlier in the video, held training, you might end up doing about 70 or more laps in a single run. Of course, you'll be filling up in the middle as well, but those tyres will have been on for almost two hours. That is held training. That is purely replicating what you're going to be doing in the race. In the race, you're going to be double stinting tyres, so practice it as well. Prepare yourself for every situation. That is what is going to build your consistency, because you're going to go into the race with the knowledge of what is going to be happening. If you just rock into the race with no practice of double stinting, you're not going to be prepared, you're going to be sceptical in a couple of places, so your lap times are going to show that. They're going to be a little bit all over the place, especially as the run goes on, not having the knowledge of how to adapt. By doing all these runs, you have that knowledge and you can adjust your driving style as it permits. In practice, if you know that the car begins to slide around lap 25 in a couple of places, when you're doing the race, you can adjust your driving style on lap 25 to counter that. That's going to save you lap time, it's going to help your consistency by again making the difference between your fastest lap and your slowest lap a lot closer.
So that's all I'm going to be talking about in today's video. A couple of little tips and some different training techniques to get you guys your consistency as high up as you can. And there really is no other way to improve your consistency than laps. It really is just making sure you're running the laps, ticking them down one after the other, and keeping yourself in that rhythm so that one day you can be in a race and get yourself into that elusive flow. Guys, again, thank you so much for the support in the past few videos. I really do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe down below. I'm trying to get to 400 subscribers by the end of the year. So two more months, a little bit under two months now. Let's see if we can do it. It would really mean a lot to me. But otherwise, I'm going to be live streaming on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Twitch. Uh, this upcoming week, it looks like on Monday, I'll be back to iRacing officials. Wednesday, a little bit of Need for Speed Heat for something a little bit different. And then on Friday... Who knows? Maybe some practice for V8 Scops at Belle Isle as well. So that should be a lot of fun. And otherwise, for my YouTube schedule, doing videos on Thursdays now. Um, move back to one video a week just because I feel I can make it higher quality and a little bit better overall for you guys to watch. Instead of rushing two videos out, maybe not up to the standard I would like them to be. But otherwise, that is all I've got to say. I'm going to shut up and get on out of here. Guys, enjoy your racing. All the best as well. Hopefully you get some great results. Catch you in the next one.